Elisha and the she-bears. First King, two, two verses. That's it. This is a crazy story. Maybe it's one of my favorite, maybe because my name's Elisha and because I'm bald. And uh, Elisha gets made fun for, uh, uh, for being bald in this story. So if you're not familiar with it, right, Elisha, uh, is, uh, he, he comes right after Elijah. He asks for a double portion. This is right on the heels of that. Double portion of, of the spirit that Elijah had. Uh, and Elijah's taken up in a fiery whirlwind. And uh, Elisha comes and he, he uh, heals some uh, uh, well of unclean water. And then this is the next thing that happens. He's going to Bethel, right? Now, this is the time of the divide of the kingdoms. There's a northern kingdom. They haven't been taken over by the Assyrians yet, and they're all evil. And then there's the southern kingdom. And if you remember, when they first split, uh, so the northern kingdom, they would have to go all the way down to Jerusalem to do all the, the, the worship. And so initially, they set up two different uh, sacrifice stations, if you will, uh, one up further in north in Dan, and then the other in Bethel. And they were supposed to be worshiping Yahweh there. But the problem was Yahweh said, you can't worship there. You're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. I'll tell you where to worship, right? So that you can know indeed that you're receiving the things that I promised. This is what Yahweh does with worship. This is what God does with worship. Tells us how to worship so we can be certain that we're receiving what he promises. Well, anyways, wouldn't you know it, uh, those two uh, uh, places of worship that were supposed to worship Yahweh devolved into actual bad, real, real bad uh, Baal worship sites. And this is what uh, uh, Bethel is at this point in time. So, You've got Elisha who's traveling down from the northern kingdom. I believe he's going into the southern kingdom. He stops at Bethel and you've got these. I think it's 42. 42, I think it is. Let me read it here. Is it 42? 42 boys who call out to him uh, and make fun of him and says, go up, go up, you bald head, you. And Elisha gets really mad and he calls uh, bears out. He curses them and he calls bears out. And the Lord sends two she-bears uh, two female mama bears come down and just rip these little boys to shreds. And then he goes on his way and finishes up. And that's kind of crazy. And we think, oh my goodness, let's never make fun of bald people ever again. And, and that might be a little harsh from our Lord, but I think there's something lost in translation here. Uh, so this uh, uh, word, uh, little boys, or two different words, little boys, can be translated as little and boys, um, but one or both, I can't remember what, uh, uh, but one of those words is, is used to uh, describe uh, uh, Solomon at his coronation when he was 20. So he wasn't little or a boy at that point in time. And another uh, time in, in, in the Old Testament scriptures, uh, those terms are used for, uh, for priests. So what I think is happening here is these aren't little boys. I think these are pagan Baal priests that are actually going and jeering at Elisha, telling him to run, get out of this little area, get out of their, their place, right? Yahweh isn't wanted here. And Elisha calls upon Yahweh to show that, no, no, Yahweh still is and always will be the God, the only God. There's no Baal. There's nobody else. So we've got Elisha, who is this prophet, a double portion of the spirit of Elijah is upon him, or the Holy Spirit that Elijah had is upon him, and he is going to go out, and he's going to call the people to repentance, and he's going to uh, bring about uh, the, the, the voice and the proclamation of the Lord, all to point forward to, of course, Jesus, but all to point forward to Yahweh indeed is the God of salvation and the God of his people and will never turn aside from them. And he's going to not let Baal prevail. He won't do it. 